Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Li Chen Zhang, and uh, I, I work in a geoscience company. I graduated uh, from uh, UH two, two years ago with PhD in mathematics. And uh, in the past one year, I've been developing like interest in the data science, machine learning stuff. So I've been doing uh, a lot of projects. So today I'm going to show uh, the work I did for one of the SEG contest uh, in the beginning of this year. And it's about uh, using uh, machine learning to do uh, the rock fishes classification. And this is the uh, outline for this presentation. So I first I do some introduction. Uh, so first of all, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, big data and machine learning. So right now, it's quite a hot topic. Uh, so uh, big data analysis and uh, machine learning are across different industries. Like in financial uh, service industry, so uh, the famous fintech, including payments, uh, loan service, banking, and uh, also some um, machine learning in the fraud detection. And uh, also in the healthcare industry, over the last decade, I think the, some uh, many pharmaceutical companies, they have been aggregating their um, years of research and development uh, data into a medical uh, database, while uh, providers have uh, digitalized the patient's medical records. And also for doctors, physicians, uh, they've been using their judgment making, uh, when making the treatment decisions. But right now, I think in the last uh, few uh, years, uh, people are trying to uh, move towards like more evidence-based uh, decision uh, medicines. So when we uh, make the treatment decisions, we are going to go over and review all the uh, clinical uh, data and try to uh, use all the information we have, you know, uh, to make the decision based on the best uh, information we have. And uh, yeah, sorry about the, the, the movie. Uh, so then in the manufacturing, we also have some uh, like, uh, benefits, like digitalizing the data and the product uh, quality and effects checking, and uh, also a supply planning and uh, like out output uh, forecasting. Uh, since I'm uh, in the oil and gas industry, I put in the end. Uh, so in the oil and gas industry, uh, so big data is not just uh, like lots of data. We have so many things we can do. Uh, so like uh, asset performance management, uh, like machine and equipment uh, health checking, and also like reliability uh, management, uh, etc. So um, it's it's quite uh, popular and uh, going more and more application in the industry. And uh, in the near future, I would believe like uh, the machine learning would make the work of uh, geologists, uh, geoscientists, uh, geoscientist, geophysicists work more uh, fun and less tedious. Um, and the ability for uh, better geological interpretation could be more um, automatic and accurate. So I, I, I try to believe, um, I think I believe this is the future. Uh, people trying to use more and more machine learning in all the like uh, a ge geophysics field. So, um, so for my project, uh, one motivation is that uh, uh, traditionally the geologists, they have to manually pick uh, like the rock fishes for all the, like uh, for each depth, for, um, uh, for each sample, uh, for each well. And, uh, when we have so many wells, uh, the data following are actually uh, from 2015 data, and you can see uh, there are so many wells uh, in each state. And uh, it takes tremendous time for them to do, to do this. And, uh, and it's also a combination of um, like measurements or, uh, uh, for each well and on the, the geologist experience. So um, our idea is if we can use uh, machine learning, so we make the machine uh, learn from the data, also learn from the technique of the geologist, we can use the machine to help uh, classify the rock fishes for us. It will save lots of time 
when we have so many wells. So uh, for this particular um, project, the data, uh, the problem was introduced by Brandon Hall in the Leading Edge magazine in uh, October 2016, and the contest was hosted uh, in the uh, during the end of 2016 and the, until the beginning of 2017. And this was actually the first machine learning contest in SEG. And uh, uh, if you like more information, you can check this GitHub. It was hosted on uh, the GitHub. Uh, this is a capture of this page. So there were like uh, 40 teams participating in this contest. They are all from the, I mean, not from the uh, US, not necessarily, they are from the, the world. Some people from uh, France, some people from other place. Um, it, it's a good event. Uh, people like uh, share the code, communicate. So if you are interested, you can check this website. And uh, the training data is from Panova Console Group Field, which is a, a, a carbonate gas reservoir with 2,700 square miles uh, in the southwestern Kansas. And uh, it consists of 10 uh, wells with uh, for more than 4,000 samples. And uh, for each, um, uh, each sample, the rock fishes were based on the examination of cores uh, vertically at half foot interval. And the test data set were two blind wells, which only has uh, features uh, like uh, log measurements for the wells, but we don't have labels. Uh, I think the host has the answer, of course, uh, but we, we didn't know that. Uh, so on the left hand side, uh, you can see the um, uh, seven, this is five, uh, two, seven features of the data. Uh, so uh, five are wildlife uh, log measurement, uh, including gamma ray resistivity, uh, porosity density, those uh, measurements. And uh, two are geological constraints. Uh, one is non-marine marine indicators, uh, essentially just zero one uh, values. So just indicate if this is a non-marine type or marine type rocks. And uh, another one is relative position. Uh, it's just a relative position to a certain uh, depth. So it's like a percentage. And on the right hand side, you can see the nine different rock uh, faces label. And I, we, we use uh, like one to nine to label them. And uh, uh, this is like the short label for each type. And also this adjacent faces, uh, you can think of this is a, a tolerance for, for your uh, interpretation because uh, between uh, two layers, two uh, different types of rocks, there, there is a like, transaction zone. So if you interpret uh, like one to be two, uh, in some sense, it's acceptable. Uh, you, so for, for example, for the second one, two, you can interpret, uh, I, I mean, it's possible you can interpret to be like uh, the first, uh, first one or the third one. But uh, for our um, project, we didn't, use, uh, we didn't um, count this into the uh, accuracy because, uh, for example, if we count that, the accuracy will be uh, much higher. Uh, so our goal is to try to uh, train a machine learning model to uh, help us classify the rock fishes. So uh, in general, there are three types of uh, machine learning. One is uh, supervised, uh, unsupervised, and reinforcement. Uh, so for supervised learning, uh, in short, it's just uh, the data has features and labels. So we try to make the machine learn and develop a predictive model. And we, so, so that we can use a model to uh, predict uh, the future data which was not uh, seen during the training session. And uh, for the unsupervised learning, uh, the difference is like the data has features, but you don't have the labels. So we try to use a machine to understand the data and uh, try to uh, discover the internal uh, representation of the data and uh, to cluster like similar ones. Uh, you can do clustering. And the reinforcement learning is an uh, approach to AI. Uh, it's a reward-based learning. Uh, so the famous AlphaGo is uh, one, of the, uh, the, the, one of the example here. So our uh, project, our task falls into the supervised learning uh, category. Uh, 
Uh, so there are many uh, algorithms for uh, supervised and unsupervised learning. Uh, for classification, we have support vector machine discriminant analysis, naive base, nearest neighbors. For regression, we have linear regression, a generalized linear model. Uh, ensemble method, decision trees. Uh, for clustering, we have key means hierarchy, a neural network, uh, and uh, like hidden uh, Markov models. So for um, this project, uh, it was the problem was uh, introduced by Brandon Hall, and uh, the base, so the benchmark uh, model he used was a uh, support vector machine. It, the support vector machine is, is a model which is widely used in the machine learning field. And uh, the algorithm uh, I use is uh, called XGBoost. Uh, it's uh, a variant of gradient boosting machine. Uh, essentially, it's a tree-based model. Uh, there are several reasons we choose this one. Uh, first, it's very easy to use. It's open source. You can download uh, you know, uh, and install very easily. And also, it has very uh, high, uh, highly developed uh, Py, uh, Python and R interface for the users. Uh, second, it's very efficient. The computation was done in C++, and it can do automatic parallel computing on a single machine or can be run on clusters. And uh, it also can be run on AWS. You can find some tutorial on, on, on this. Uh, and uh, the accuracy usually is very high. It provides very good result to uh, most data set. And also, it's... Uh, uh, the winning models for many Kaggle computations. Uh, for those who don't know uh, what Kaggle is, uh, Kaggle is a platform which uh, provides the uh, predictive modeling and analytics uh, computation. So uh, co some companies, uh, including Google and uh, some uh, other companies, they put their data, and some researchers, they also post data. So they want people to help uh, understand the data. and. Uh, Statisticians, uh, data scientists, uh, data miner, uh, data scientists to be, uh, so they compete on this platform and try to produce to produce the best uh, predictive models and try to understand the data. And uh, this year in March, the CAG was captured uh, was uh, required uh, acquired by uh, Google, so it's now it's part of Google right now. Uh, I think it's it's a wise move for Google. Uh, uh, last but not least, it's uh, uh, feasibility. So you can have your own customized objective function and the evaluation function. And there are many uh, tunable parameters. So it's quite flexible. Uh, so uh, yeah, by like, considering this, so we decided to use XGBoost uh, for our um, contest. And the idea behind the, uh, XG, the gradient boosting is that uh, we update the model by uh, learning from the error um, made by the previous iteration. So, uh, uh, for example, it's like a as a student, I uh, learn my mistake from my previous quiz and try to improve my score for the next quiz and e eventually for the final. So, uh, th that's a basic idea. Uh, and for each iteration, the gradient boosting is like you add a um, a function to the uh, to your model, uh, which will uh, help you reduce the loss function. Uh, so in XGBoost, uh, the objective function can be written as follows. Uh, it's essentially a, a combination of loss function and the regularization term, uh, but with some rearrangement. Uh, uh, so here, the G, the notation G and uh, H, they have uh, like complicated form, so I just don't put it here. Uh, you, you, you can uh, refer to the documentation for XGBoost. It, it, this one has a very detailed uh, uh, explanation of all the parameters and the principle behind this method. And uh, so before we use this model, we need to do some uh, data analysis to explore you know, some uh, yeah, the features about this data. So in the red box, it's the five wildlife log uh, me measurement. I only take the first 10 rows to do the uh, uh, display. And the yellow box, the yellow box is the uh, two uh, indicated variables, uh, like uh, geological constraints. And uh, 
This column is our facies label. So this is our target to predict uh, for our wells. And also you have some uh, other feature like well name, uh, formation for each uh, depth and uh, depth. So here are some uh, data visualization for uh, this data. So uh, first one is uh, distribution of the training data by facies. So you can see the nine bars, and they are not quite very balanced. Uh, so uh, in general, there are some techniques you can deal with unbalanced data, like uh, uh, oversampling or undersampling. Or, but uh, essentially, uh, it's best to get more data for your model. And on the left bottom, this one, it's uh, the heat map, which uh, plots the correlation between the features and the labels. So the dark red means uh, higher uh, positive correlation. The dark blue going this direction means uh, uh, higher negative correlation. So you can see uh, different values in the matrix. And uh, the middle one and uh, the right one are two plots of uh, the five, five log uh, measurements for two wells. So you can see some uh, features pattern here. There are some uh, peaks, uh, trough at uh, you know, uh, the different depths. So certainly there are some uh, pattern underneath this, but uh, without experience, you know, many years experience, it's really difficult to interpret this. So uh, for us, that's why we need the machine to help us uh, dig into uh, the data and find the relationship between the labels and the, and the older features. Uh, one important part is feature engineering, which is very fundamental to the application of machine learning. Uh, this requires uh, uh, using some domain knowledge to create additional features uh, to help uh, increase the performance of your model. And uh, for our case, uh, we adopt uh, a set of augmented features which uh, essentially to show the uh, like data has some spatial correlation. Okay, I'm running out of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, to, uh, to, to show some uh, spatial correlation between data because essentially the data are like measurement of uh, sediment uh, layers. And uh, one feature we use is the uh, gradient between two adjacent samples. So it uh, will show you uh, how much difference it change between two different samples, and we do this for each sample. Um, and another one is a spatial window. So uh, I think one uh, Typical uh, trick is uh, we can define spatial window. You can extract uh, maximum, minimum, mean value, uh, median value, and uh, you can also do cross uh, correlation, uh, you know, within the window. And we do this by sliding the window from top to bottom uh, with some padding on the edge to deal with the boundary. Yeah, once we, I mean, I, I skip some part like, uh, you know, dealing with missing data and uh, all the like other stuff, uh, remove outliers. And on the left hand side, you can see the, a, a standard flow to till the parameter for XG boost because it's uh, essentially a tray based model. So uh, it's better to till the tray based parameter first, then you go to other uh, parameters. And the one way to do this is uh, called uh, random search. So we provide a range for each parameter, and you let the machine randomly generate combinations of parameters and uh, evaluate on them and uh, return a best uh, result for you. Uh, another one I call the grade search. It's similar, but in this case, you define um, a grade for each parameter and uh, the machine evaluate on each combination and return the best one. Usually it's difficult to say which one is better. So we have to uh, try and see, you know, uh, see the result, which one works better for you. Uh, for our um, project, uh, the grade search uh, works better, so I put, uh, put it bigger. So. 
uh, in the end, we got uh, F1 score at 0 0.63, which is like 47% uh, improvement of the benchmark, 0 0.427. Uh, so it's a, it's a small um, contest project, uh, but I would say there are a lot of potential applications of this prediction. Uh, we can use that to uh, validate the velocity model for seismic data. Uh, we can also use that to uh, help identify the noise, multiples, faults uh, for the uh, seismic image. And uh, also it can help uh, interpret uh, like well-top peaks. Uh, this is one small project I did for uh, 2017 uh, geophysics hackathon. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you are interested, you can Google this. Uh, so, uh, I, I, uh, so in the end, I just would like to say, uh, so in the, in the near future, in the oil and gas industry, uh, many more to come. Uh, so in the end, I would like to thank uh, like Ted, Petro, uh, Ai Chun Huang, Zhong Yan Dong, and uh, Yan Xu for discussion and uh, suggestion. Uh, Yan Xu is the next speaker, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, here's a code. Uh, the reference is a code we use for this contest. Um, thank you. All right. We have time for one question. Here, here. Oh, here. yes, I'm sorry. I was totally looking at it. So, oh, I'm a little alien here. I'm a geophysicist, and I was casually reading this article last week. Uh, the results, even though I fully share your, your vision in the future, mm -hmm. the results of this um, challenge were a little bit disappointed to me. As a geophysicist, I was expecting more. What do you think will be the measures to improve the results in the future? Oh, I think, uh, I mean, I think the, like, uh, the, there are some future work we can do. Like, uh, we can do more, we can spend more time on the feature engineering to derive more uh, meaningful features. And also, we can build a more uh, complicated, so sophisticated mo models. Even uh, I was thinking about using uh, deep learning neural network to do this, but uh, it's a future work. We haven't thought about that. Yeah. All right, let's uh, thank our speaker. <clears throat>